तदा दृष्टु स्वरूपे वस्तानम Upon achieving the condition of yoga samadhi the seer the individual self abides in his own spiritual form or nature in the previous verse patanjali spoke about the cessation of all the activities that constitute material consciousness the activities that generally take place within the mind um it's very interesting that in the commentary style of biasa is that he generally puts a question before the shloka and or the sutra and in putting a question what he is doing is using it as a device to then allow patanjali to answer the question that he poses and the question that that biasa puts here is fundamentally that when the mind and consciousness are no longer absorbed in that which is material what will be the nature of the purusha so we then have the answer provided by by patanjali and what we will do is is go through each of the um the english synonyms for the for the sanskrit words uh, tada meaning of course then then this uh drashtu is the another form of of this um word that's been used by patanjali already the seer the individual self when patanjali uses this term and i'll just use the english the, the seer or or drastri in its form here um patanjali is not actually s- intending that it mean the power of of physical sight through a, f- a physical organ of, of one of the sense organs the organs of sight but it's actually used in a more m- metaphorical way if we observe closely how sensual perception takes place and the yogis would engage in these activities as part of the journey towards the self discovery like for instance let's take the physical sight or seeing something what happens is the light strikes an object and then bouncing off that object it enters the lens in the eye and it stimulates um photosensitive cells in the back of the eyeball which are then um agitated to produce electrical impulses and those electrical impulses travel down the optic nerve and stimulate the visual cortex of the brain when you look at the mechanism of seeing physical sight the mechanism does not explain how we actually see i mean the common person if you ask them how is it that you can see most people say well it's because i've got eyes but actually the eyes don't truly see they just allow light and images um from the transformations of light to to enter and to stimulate the um back of the eye the photosensitive cells that create electrical impulses so how is seeing actually taking place this is a very big subject and of course in in modern times um the interest in in quantum physics they also really examine this phenomena and begin to question where is perception actually taking place and of course in in the, for the yogis and they understood that the mind becomes the repository or like a movie screen upon which 
all the different sensual perceptions are, are projected. But who is it that's sitting in that movie house, if I can use that analogy, and looking at the screen? Who is the one that's actually observing? And this um, entity that's doing the actual observing was called by Patanjali as the seer. And so here in this verse, we begin to look at the nature of that seer. So in the next um, word, Swarupe, it Swa means one's own, it, one's own. It's inherently part of you, one's own. And the word Rupa literally means form. So Swarupe means one's own form or essential nature. And then avast, um, Avastanam is the means that one stands or abides or resides or is situated um, in that th in that condition or state. So when we look at this verse, this um, sutra and the previous one together, then we have an interesting reading looking at these ideas together. When the endless mental fluctuations and modifications known as vritti, which characterize material consciousness, when they are suspended or arrested, that is yoga. And upon achieving the condition of yoga or samadhi, the seer or individual self abides in his own spiritual form or nature. So this is a, a um, uh, pretty amazing and wonderful idea that's been presented here by, by Patanjali. Um, I would just like to bring your attention to uh, three of the words from this second um, sutra in the first pada, and that is yoga chitta and niroda. And the reason I'm um, asking you to, to look at this is because it is amazingly similar to one verse in the Bhagavad Gita. In the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which is um, titled as Dhyana, Dhyana Yoga, where the process of meditation and the end result of meditation are explained. We have this um, verse, the 20th shloka, where we have these three words, um, chittam, nirudham, yoga. Now, while, while the term yoga here is going to be used a little bit differently, it has to do with the performance or the activities, the engagement in the process of yoga, we can see that there are very clear similarities. And if we look at the English translation of this verse, it literally um, could be used to further expound upon or even replace these two, the second and third sutras of Patanjali. So in the state of perfection called Samadhi, one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by the practice of yoga. This perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. So I've always um, I very much appreciated the great um, similarity between this uh, verse from the Bhagavad Gita and these first two, um, uh, these two uh, sutras from Patanjali's work. Now, a big question arises. When 
Patanjali speaks of the Swarupe, the essential form or nature of the seer, he does not expound on this. He, if you ask, well, what, what does that mean? He has chosen not to speak to this subject. And we can see that the focus of Patanjali is primarily, at least at this point and through much of the Yoga Sutra, on the process, the contemplative process of, of meditation to attain samadhi. And the very nature of the mind that needs to be overcome or dealt with by the practitioner or aspirant, the um, sadaka or the yogi. And of course, we can ask, well, why doesn't he say anything about the actual nature of the living being? It's we cannot actually say and nor do I think it is appropriate to to speculate um, on such a subject. But I find it of great interest myself, primarily because of the way in which I have also been instructed and taught by my um, guru, one of my spiritual teachers. this my my guru he taught that self-realization self-realization can be experienced differently by different spiritual sadhakas full self-realization means the um, realization of one's actual essence, position, and natural function. So my Guru Maharaj, he told me that, that anything that you want to examine and know the truth about, it's essential to know what is its essence. And if we can translate that to something maybe simpler for many people like what constitutes it? What's it made from? What is the essence of, of this object we're seeking to understand? Position relates to where does it fit in the scope of things? What is the nature of my connection or relationship with other living beings, with other spiritual beings? What is my connection or relationship with the um, material world in which I find myself in this embodied state. And so that, that explains where, where um, the object will fit within a, not exactly a hierarchy, but within its environment. And the third um, part of knowing something in truth is to understand its natural function in its pure and uncontaminated state, what is the natural function of this object? And here we're speaking of the Atma or the spiritual being and, or the self. So the process of, of self-realization can be experienced in a realization of one's essence. It can be experienced in a realization of my position, which also includes my essence. And on the furthest end of that spectrum of realization is the realization of the natural function of, of the, um, in this case, the living being, the Atma or the, or the self. And there are going to be a, a correlation between these realizations and what we can broadly term as, as God realization or realization of the highest truth or the ultimate truth. 
So um, in relation to these um, three types of, of spiritual realization, one way that this was being presented is that all self-realization is considered perfection and it is truly per perfection the perfection of human existence of of experience spiritual experience excuse me but the realization of one's position is considered to be even more perfect when i have a broader understanding and realization of, of my position a realization of the natural function of the eternal being is being categorized as, as most perfect but on this subject we will talk a little bit more about that as we um, go go forward thank you very much mm <clears throat>